Well, this is the small group section that we, that we normally do for Awanas. So uh, let's open in a word of prayer and we'll begin. Uh, Father God, we just pray that uh, as we continue this study of faithfulness, that we would uh, draw closer to you and we could learn and understand the truths that you have prepared for us. Now just uh, be with us tonight. Um, help us to honor you through the things that we do and say. And Lord, I just pray for all these kids that are out there in this, uh, during this time. Now just uh, be near to us and uh, strengthen us, I pray in your son's name. Amen. So tonight we're talking about faithfulness. You know, we just got done with the large group lesson on faithfulness, and we talked about how uh, Abraham was faithful, how God is faithful to us, how Jesus Christ was faithful to us and to his father. Um, and so tonight we're picking up on that, and uh, we're to, to talk about Colossians 1.10. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. And so, we're to walk worthy of the Lord. So, the first, the first question that we're to, to do is, look up and read the verse below, underline the things you are commanded to do. Circle the things that God will do if you are faithful. So it's Psalms 37, 3 through 6. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. So we're to underline the things you are commanded to do. So, what might be some things you are commanded to do? We'll underline in red the things we're commanded to do, and I'll underline in blue the things that God will do if you are faithful. So, what are some things we're commanded to do? One thing, we're to trust in the Lord. You know, we're to trust in Him. He calls us and tells us to trust in Him. And that's where our faith comes in, is... We are to trust in God, and we're to trust in the Lord. Another thing we are to do is to dwell in the land. What does it mean to dwell in the land? Well, to dwell is to live. So, to dwell in the land, this is, remember, an Old Testament verse. So, to dwell in the land, it was to live in the land of Canaan. It was to live in the promised land that God had called them to. And so when he's telling us that we're to dwell in the land, we're to live in Christ. So our new promised land is heaven. That's what we're looking forward to. But to dwell on the land, that means that we need to still be living it out now. And so that means we dwell in Christ. We live in Christ. And we live out our life here on, on this earth. We're dwelling in this land here on earth, but we're living out our faithfulness and our trust in Jesus Christ here on earth that we might regain the rewards of heaven that he has promised us. Uh, it also says, and do good. Yeah, we're to do good things. We're to do good. We're to glorify God. We're to do good to fellow people, to our neighbors. We're to show the love of Christ to all those that are around. And that means that we're to do good things for them. Because guess what? God did good things for us. He did great things for us, right? And so, uh, what are other things that we're to do? One, another thing, and feed on his faithfulness. We're to feed on Christ. We're to feed on God, his faithfulness. We're to take that energy, that faithfulness that he has shown us, and we're to suck that in so that we can live it out. You know, if you look at a lighthouse, and this is a great example for how a Christian should live. You know, a lighthouse is powered by a little bitty candle, or a big candle in that case, and then it has a huge reflector. So this candle is reflecting the light out over the oceans, out over these huge lakes, so that ships can see and be warned of that danger. And so... We are to feed on his faithfulness, and that means we're to take that faithfulness in 
And as an individual, we're to let that light of Christ shine out brightly to the world. And so as we feed on him, it passes through us and onto the world around us. What else are we to, what else are we to do? Things that we're to do. We're to also commit your way to the Lord. What does that mean to commit your way to the Lord? Well, when you think of committing your way to the Lord, you are dedicating what you're doing to Him. You're saying, hey, you know what, God? You have promised me to do this, and you promised to give me salvation if I trust in, in you. So I'm going to commit to that, and I'm going to follow through, and that means I'm going to do what you've told me to do. I'm going to live a faithful life in that. And so when we commit our way to the Lord, we're, we are dedicating our lives to Him so that He can use it for His glory and honor. Is there anything else that we're to do? Well, one more thing that we're to do. Is to trust also in Him. We can't trust in ourselves. When we trust in ourselves and we start saying, hey, guess what, God? I think I got this. I can do this. We start falling on our face. That's when we fail, when we start trusting ourselves. But the Bible tells us in Psalms 37, 3 through 6, that we are to trust also in Him. Not in ourselves. We're to trust in Him because guess what? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what He is going to do for us. So we were to underline the things that you are commanded to do, and now we're going to underline in blue the things that God will do for you. So what is one thing in this verse that God says he will do for you? He says that he shall give you the desires of your heart. That's one thing that he's going to do for us. Does that mean that we can say, hey, God, guess what? I want that nice new Lamborghini because it's going to be so fun to drive. No, that's not what he's promising. He's, he's going to be faithful to us. He's going to give us what we long for. And if we trust in God, our longing, the desire of our heart, if we are following Christ, should be Christ. And he will reward that. Yeah, he might reward that with riches. He might reward that with other things. But ultimately, our desire in our heart that he's talking about here, that he's going to give us, is a stronger desire to follow him. He will give us that, and he will be faithful to that. You know, he will provide our needs. He will take look after us. He'll take care of us. Might not always be the way we think it should be. But he is going to give us those desires. And he's going to follow through on that. And what else should, what else will God do? And he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light. And your justice as the light. As the noonday. It doesn't say that we are going to bring our justice as the noonday. And that we are going to bring forth our righteousness as the light. He shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness. God is going to make us righteous. God is going to provide our justice. Not ourselves. But God. God brings forth. God provides all of this. But we are to be faithful to him. And he, as you see here, will be faithful to us. And that's what he's looking at here with Psalms 37, 3 through 6. Uh, when we follow God, we're being faithful to him. We're saying he is trustworthy because he is God. God wants you to trust him with all your heart and with everything that happens in your life. When we acknowledge, know, and recognize God in our lives, he show, he, uh, we show trust and have faith. 
Look up and read 2 Chronicles 31, 20 through 21. Second Chronicles 20 through 21. This is what Hezekiah did throughout Judah, doing what was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God, in everything that he undertook in the service of God's temple and in obedience to the law and the commands, he sought his God and worked wholeheartedly, and so he prospered. Was Hezekiah faithful to God? Well, what did, what did it say there? This is what Hezekiah did throughout Judah, doing what was good and right and faithful before the Lord. In everything that he undertook in the service of God's temple and, his, and in obedience to the law and to the commands, he saw his God and worked wholeheartedly. And so he prospered. So yeah, Hezekiah was faithful to God. He was faithful to God in all that he did. In the temple, in obedience to the law, in obedience to his commands, in everything he undertook, in every service that he did, he was faithful to God. And what did it say about God? It said, and so he prospered. That's saying because God, because Hezekiah was faithful to God, God was faithful to him. He prospered him. He allowed him to grow and prosper and be productive as a haven to Hezekiah's faithfulness. It was his rewarding Hezekiah for that act of faithfulness. And God will reward our acts of faithfulness to him. But we got to be faithful. We got to, in everything we do, we need to glorify and honor God. And God will glorify and honor you in in what you need to do. Uh, how do you need to be more faithful to God? Well, this is something that you guys need to set and think about. There's tons of ways we can be more faithful to God. You know, we can spend more time in God's Word. We can spend more time praying to God. We can be faithful to God and sharing the gospel with somebody that doesn't know it or hasn't heard about it. Those are some ways we can be faithful to God. And when we do that, God will be faithful to us. God will show his faithfulness to us. So, some things to think about. What does it mean for someone to be faithful? Think about this and have a discussion with those that are around you. Think about what it means to be faithful to someone. Next is, how can you grow in your faithfulness to God? Think about things that you can do, ways that you can change, steps that you can take so that you can be faithful to God. Because that's what God wants. It's not that he's asking for perfection. Well, he would love it. But he's not asking or expecting perfect, perfection. He just wants faithfulness. He wants you to love him. And he wants you to seek after him and to glorify him and to long for him. That's what he wants. He doesn't want riches. He doesn't want you to be some great, awesome speaker or some missionary on another part of the world. Yeah, if he calls you to do that, you need to be faithful and walk through that. But he's not expecting it from everybody. He's called each of us. If we trust in Jesus Christ, he's called each of us to do what we can where we're at. You know, when God charged the disciples and when Christ charged the disciples after he rose again, he sent them out first to Judea and then to Samaria and then to the ends of the world. And what's that saying is you got to be faithful at home first. You gotta trust God where you're living at at that time. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, if I was only a missionary. Well, you know what? If you're not faithful here, 
Are you going to be faithful in a world that's 3,000 miles away, a whole different other language, and who knows what creepy crawly things are crawling around your bedroom? No. It's going to be hard for you to be faithful in that. But so you got to be faithful first at home. And then move out into the other world. And as you show your faithfulness here, he will expand your horizons and cause you to go out and share that faithfulness with those that are around you in moving you farther and farther to glorify and honor him. So when you show that you're faithful in small things, he will prove faithful in large things. And so as we close up tonight, uh, let us pray and uh, keep in mind the fact that you know, ways that we can be more faithful to God and ways that people have been faithful to us because that's a, that's a good lesson for us to realize and to remember that as people are being faithful to us, that's God showing us His faithfulness to you. He's showing you examples, modern day examples that you can see of people being faithful to God here on earth. And so we can trust in that and that's Him working in today's world. And so look for those things. We go by a lot of times in life, not realizing all that God does because we don't look for it. We look for the big things. But, you know, God is always act, active and he's working in the small things as well. So if we look for it and we train ourselves to think about it and look for ways that God's faithful, we will recognize it and we will see how God is faithful in our lives, even in the smallest of details. Let's pray and we'll uh, close this session. Uh, Father God, you are so faithful. You take care of us far better than we can ever imagine. And we thank you for that. We thank you for knowing our needs long before we even know it. And Lord, I just pray that uh, these kids would, would take the lessons that they're learning here and apply them to their lives. And that they would seek for ways that they can be faithful to you. Sharing the gospel with friends, family strangers that they don't know but sharing that gospel and spreading the word to them and to this world that is dying and hurting for you now lord i just pray that as we uh, go today that we would uh, seek to honor you in all that we do and say we pray this in your son's name amen